So now that we've defined and learned how to identify what makes something a function, we are going to focus our attention on our first big group or family of functions called linear functions. We're going to see what characteristics um, all of these functions have in common when we look at their graphs, their table of input outputs or ordered pairs, mapping diagrams, and even equations. Um, we'll see what characters, characteristics they share that make them linear. And really the rest of the year, a big part of it will be spent on uh, diving deep into three function families. First, the linear one, which we're starting today. Later, the exponential functions. And in the spring, we'll focus a lot on quadratic functions. So first, today is all about identifying, being able to tell if something is or is not linear based on different uh, forms of data, right, or, or different displays of data. So let's start with uh, graphing. So graphing is probably the easiest um, one to determine because by definition, a linear function will always be a straight line or a straight path. So anytime we're looking at a graph, that is what we're looking for. If we see that all of the points line up so that if we connected them, they make a straight line, no bends, no curves, no changing direction, just a straight path all the way through, then you know it's a linear function. Okay. Uh, in a mapping diagram, it's a little bit more about the pattern. So I would say in a mapping diagram, it's going to be more similar to the table where we're going to be looking for a constant rate of change. And maybe this sounds familiar because you did a little bit of it last year, but a constant rate of change. So we'll explore and see, you know, how much is the X value increasing by every time. So in this case, if it goes negative one, zero, one, two, it's just increasing by one every time. And if that's a steady constant increase like that, then that's great. Then we can actually check the Y. They both have to be a constant increase or decrease all the way through. And so this went up by one as well. From three to four, it went up by one. And from four to five, it went up by one. They don't have to be the same, but the, the, the change in your Y should be the same in the X and in the change in X. And then we'll go further later into like slope and all of that stuff. But right now what we're looking for is, is there a steady increase or decrease? That's what typically we're looking for is that constant rate of change. And in an equation, they look like this very often where we have a Y and an X and no, you know, just a pretty plain equation. Um, the X itself is, you know, um, not in the denominator. It doesn't have a power. It's not inside of absolute value bars. It's just a plain X. It could have a coefficient, could be 2X and that'd be all right, but it's not X squared or X to the fifth power. It's just a plain X term and a plain Y term. Okay, So let's try some of these and see if we can identify whether or not these are linear. So again, let's start with a graph. That's probably the easiest way. We are looking for a straight path that doesn't bend, doesn't change direction, um, doesn't curve in any way. So we're looking for a straight. And if it helps, actually grab a ruler and you can put it up to the graph to test it and see if you can you know, get it to touch all of the points. And if it can, then you know that it is a linear. And if it bends or curves and you can't put a straight, straight line against it, then it is not linear. So as you can already tell based on what I was doing here, this definitely has a curve to it. Right? It's not a perfect straight line. If I try to put this straight edge to it, it definitely doesn't touch all the points. That's not a straight path, so this is nonlinear function. So it still passes a vertical line test, so it's still a function, but is a nonlinear. Okay. But if we compare that to the, for example, on number two, if you look on number two, you've got a very straight path there. It doesn't seem to change direction. It doesn't curve. It doesn't have any, you know, gaps. I can put this straight edge right up against it and it touches all the points. This is definitely a linear function. So from a graph, pretty easy to tell. Let's take a look from a table. In a table, it's more about the pattern. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is make sure the x's are going up by a constant amount. So one, two, three, four. It definitely seems like these guys are all increasing by one every time to get from one to the next. 
It's just plus one every time. So if that is reliable, then now I can check my y values and see if they also are increasing or decreasing. <clears throat> Excuse me, by the <coughs> same amount. So let's look for a pattern in the y values. So from negative 1 to 2, that is an increase of 3. From 2 to 5, that's also an increase of 3. And from 5 to 8 is also an increase of 3. So since we had that constant steady increase in both of our variables, we can say this is a linear function. Let's test on number four. We'll always check the x's to be sure. Negative one, zero, one, two. That's still all increasing by one, so that's good news as long as it's increasing by steady. Same amount every time. Then we can compare the y's. So if we look from zero to negative one, that is a decrease of one, which is fine as long as it's the same. So that went down by one, but then from negative one, Back to zero, that's an increase of one. So it went down one and then back up. So that is not a constant change. And then from zero to three, it changed up even more. It went up three. So since these are different, right, as this stayed steady, the Y's kind of like, you know, decreased and went up, then went up even more. It wasn't a constant rate of change. This is a nonlinear function. Let's look at examples with equations. So again, in equations, what we're really looking for here is to ensure that I have an X term and a Y term, that those are not connected, that they're two different terms, and they don't have any kind of weird stuff like exponents on the X, X is not in the denominator, X doesn't have X, um, absolute value bars or square roots around it, it's just a regular X term. So here I have three minus two X, that's a regular X term, it's not connected to other letters. This is linear. Okay. But then if we look at number six, the y is a regular term. That's fine. But then I have here uh, negative three-fourths x to the third power. That third power is enough to be a deal breaker here. And so that's not going to be a linear function. And one thing that you can do here is test this on your calculator. So you can come here, if you're not 100% sure, you can go up here to the very top left, go to your y equals, enter the equation. So in this case, it's 3 minus 2x. Let's say that I wasn't 100% sure. And hit graph and see if it actually graphs a straight line. So that's my confirmation right there that I was right when I thought that this was a linear function. I can confirm it with a graph, which is a lot easier to determine. But now let's take a look at number six. If I go ahead and I enter this one, that's a negative three-fourths. That part's okay, but when I go to put in an x to the third power, okay, let's see what that graph's like. That is definitely not a straight line, right? Kind of goes down and it just dips and then it goes back down. Um, definitely curvy, changing direction. Definitely not a straight line. So this is nonlinear. A nonlinear function. Okay. Let's go ahead and flip that over. We'll practice just a couple more here together, and I'll let you try a few so you can decide. Uh, try 7 and 8 here and see what you get when you um, attempt deciding if that's linear or nonlinear. Okay. And if you said this is linear, you're right on track. So this is a linear function, and this one's definitely, it's a lot like the one that we graphed just a moment ago. That's not a straight line. If you try to put a, a straight edge up against it, it's not a straight, you know, you won't touch all the points like it will here. There it is. See how nice that is? This one doesn't quite fit, right? So this is not linear. Good. Okay, try number nine. Do you think that is a linear function? Okay. 
And if you said this is linear, you are correct. And the way that you would show your work or, you know, your determination is you would kind of mark what the increase was in your X's versus and compare that to the increase in your Y's. So here, this one went up by one every time, so that was constant and steady. And then from three to five, five to seven, seven to nine, it was always increasing by two. So again, there's that constant rate of change where it's increasing or decreasing by the same amount. Okay. Try number 10. So on number 10, this went up by three. Then it went up by three. And then it went up by three. So okay on the X's. On the Y's, from two to five, that's an increase of three. From five to six, that's only an increase of one, though. And from six to 10, that's an increase of four. So since these were different, this is nonlinear. And then let's go ahead and try these guys with a look. We'll finish out with our equations. We'll just do a couple of these. So if you take a look here, we've got y equals the square root of x plus 5. That square root symbol, that's not a regular x term. So we're looking for just regular x terms. Even if they have a number in front, that's okay. But the x itself doesn't have anything, you know, kind of weird about it, meaning exponents, denominators, square roots, or, or absolute values. And if you're not sure, like I said, you can... Put those into your calculator to test it. But with that square root symbol, I know right away there that that's not going to work. This is not, or it's, it's going to work, but it's nonlinear. And if you want, you can test that out. You can come here to your y equals. Sorry. You can put your square root and your x, and then plus 5 outside of that. You can just copy exactly the equation the way we have it. And then you can graph that to see what it looks like. And you're going to see that that's definitely not a straight line. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. It stops. It doesn't keep going in both directions. Not linear. And then this one, we've got y equals 4x minus 2. It's just a regular x term. No exponents, no bars, no radicals, um, meaning square root symbols. This one's okay. This one's a linear function, and you could test it on your calculator if necessary. Try 13. See what you think. If you got linear here, you are absolutely correct. How about number 14? If you said nonlinear, you are absolutely correct. Good. All right. So that's how we determine linear versus nonlinear. We're going to do number 15 together in class. Have a great rest of your day.